we're going to start with a block diagram of our electronic brake system. Yeah, we call it electronic brake because it's bigger than just ABS. Uh, it could be electronic stability control. Remember the name of this program is dynamic vehicle control, and we need ABS in order to have dynamic vehicle control. But both of these, ABS and ESC, are going to require individual brake pressure control. That is the secret, controlling brake pressure. We're going to say that a lot of times during the course of this presentation because you really need to understand that. But we're going to rely on the signals from the speed sensor for ABS to identify wheel slip. Wheel slip means that one of the sensors shows a signal slowing down more than the others. That tells the ECM that wheel is slipping more than the rest. This wheel slip increase directional stability goes down. We're trying to maintain directional stability. So we got to start with wheel speed sensor operation and diagnostics. Here's the bottom line. When you understand operations properly, you will be able to diagnose better. Here's our wheel speed signals. What we're going to do is the electronic brake control, ECU, is going to look at these signals to identify and target signals that are slowing down. When it finds a wheel that's slowing down, it is going to reduce the brakes pressure slightly to bring it back in speed with the rest of the wheels. That, in a nutshell, is everything you need to understand about ABS. How it does that is the difficult part. Here's individual teeth. Now, as you can see here, it is possible to get them damaged and get contamination in them. We're going to talk about two different variations, and one of them is a magnetic pickup. The magnetic pickup puts out a signal, and most diagnostics tell you to diagnose them with a resistance check. Now, give me a moment here, and let's look at the three elements that create this signal. First is the magnet. You see that in blue there. Then is a coil of wire. The coil of wire is the only thing tested by resistance. Then there is a spinning tooth or gear, target we call it, tone wheel some people call it. It's generating, and the air gap between the, the magnet and the tone wheel will determine the amplitude. The speed of the tone wheel will also increase amplitude and will increase the frequency. Let's see how that looks on a lab scope. We like using a diagnostic waveform on our lab scope, and here's why. When we look at this, this is an actual pattern. The center is zero. It's going AC voltage above and below. As we speed it up, it suddenly jumps up. Much larger signal, higher frequency. We're doing 50, 55 miles an hour. As we speed it up further, we're doing 65 and 70. Now, we have a lot of patterns on here. Each one of these represents a tooth on the tone wheel, gear, target, whatever you want to call it. Notice there's variations in amplitude, slightly. That slight variation in amplitude, we like to slow it, get a lot of patterns on the screen, because that shows us how much variation there is in the wheel bearings, how much wobble is there in the wheel bearings. That shows up in amplitude. Is that a big diagnostic? No. It's just a clue for you. But we are looking for problems that can cause. Here's the way magnetic restrictive elements work. Toyota has a very unique system. Their active sensors use dual magnetic resistive elements. MREs, they call them. We call them magnetostrictive in other cases. The magnets in this Toyota example are embedded in the inner race of the hub bearing. It has an output that signal is pretty constant at all speeds. Now, the two chips output a high signal when they align with the North Pole. And it looks like this. Oh, you say, wow, we have a difference in backwards and forwards. You might ask, why is it important to understand there's a difference going forward and backwards? Well, Doc Nall and I both feel that the more you understand a system, the better you're able to diagnose it. We want you to understand right here that if you rotate one direction, the signal will look one way. If you rotate the opposite, it looks slightly different. But both signals are normal. You must understand normal to understand how to test. Let's take a closer look at this. 
Now we have a straight line magnet here with north and south poles. Remember, as each north lines up with a particular MRE, it will create a high signal. And here's what we get as we go down through here. It goes high and low, high and low. Now they're going to detect every rotation of the wheel, regardless of wheel speed. That's the good news. They work over a wider range than the magnetics. Let's go the opposite direction and see how they work. Because they're lining up differently, we wind up with a double hump in our signal. Again, we're teaching you two things. One, there's a difference in the way the sensor works. And number two, you can't use standard testing you've been using in the past. If you rotated the wheel and just looked for a signal and expect to see one, you're not going to see it on this vehicle unless you have B-plus applied. And that you cannot use resistance testing you've been using on wheel speed sensors to test this sensor. You begin to get the picture we're talking about understand operation better and you'll do a better job diagnosing. This is exactly what we're talking about. We have circuitry inside. You're going to have to check it electrically. Make sure it has B plus and make sure that it's getting a good target. Now let's talk about what can go wrong. Well, some of these are sealed up so they don't get dirt. That's great. But let's see what happens. Here's a truck. It's got four wheel speed sensors and it's got four air modulator valves. And we'll talk more about that later. But we've been talking about cars. This applies equally to trucks. It's the same signal, their magnetic pickup. Yes, truck books say measure them only with ohmmeters. We've already showed you why you need to go beyond that, even on trucks. Uh, one nice thing about trucks is they typically have a hundred teeth on their tone wheel, as they call it. That is 3.6 degrees for each AC waveform that starts off, goes to a positive peak, goes below zero, and come, goes negative, and comes back to a positive peak. That represents the footprint of the tire. If you look at the footprint of the tire out of 360 degrees, about 3.6 degrees of that tire is in contact with the road surface. So the 100 degrees represents one rotation of the tire, makes it easier to keep track. What can go wrong? Well, first of all, sensors that go wrong don't produce a good signal. Wow. What could cause it not to produce a good signal? Now, remember, if we looked at the signal with our lab scope, we will know whether it's good or not. We could have shorted and possibly even open coils in our magnetic pickup. We could have a weak sensor magnet in a magnetic pickup. Heat, vibration, age weaken the magnets. Metal particles in the sensor air gap. You saw those individual teeth. If they get medical particles in them, they won't have a good pickup. They'll cause a lot of noise. Wiring problems, especially after a collision. The Toyota we worked on recently that had no B plus to the MRE sensor had been involved in a collision. Surprise. Broken or missing teeth on the target or ring, tone gear or uh, target gear, whichever you want to call it. Out of all of these, resistance testing locates the shorted pickup coil. It misses other failures and it does not work with active speed sensors. So we say we recommend using a lab scope. We don't take that lightly. We understand it means having more equipment, but we hope you also understand it's because it's the best possible diagnosis. Now we have a speed sensor off a pickup truck. This pickup truck has the speed sensor in the differential on the rear end. We had to remove this cover. And why did we remove this cover? Because when we checked this signal, it had a lot of noise. We take the cover off. It's pretty dirty, but you can see there's a lot of metal, metal particles in there attached themselves to the magnet. We don't get a good pickup. Our waveform said we need to check this sensor because we have a problem. We got here because of more detail. 